Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Surviving Mars in our Nova Roma series. So we have just built a third dome, which uh, according to the comment section may or may not have actually been necessary, but um, as far as I am currently aware, that blue line, if I wasn't clear about this last episode, is like the access range of the colonists to the dome. Maybe it's not. Maybe it stands for, for something else. Um, I, I don't know if there's a tooltip anywhere that tells me what exactly uh, that is, uh, it seems to be, um, I mean, I can't imagine what else it would, what else it would stand for. I know that it's the, it's the work area, certainly for the dome, but that also seems to imply like that's how far out people will go from one particular installation, you know, to the next without seeking transport. So, um, you know, when I was looking at this, I was like, wow, you know, when you look at, you know, these people, they can't actually reach, you know, from, from in their walking area, they can't get to the door of this dome, you know, and the same here. So that was my motivation for building that dome. And uh, I don't know if it'll help. Uh, maybe it won't. Someone said that there was actually uh, a colonist that went from one dome to the other. And it really seemed to me in the last episode, like the homeless colonist that I was really trying to build this dome for. I built the, I really built the entire dome for one colonist. Uh, there was some that was homeless and I was trying to figure out why. And we're, st we're still going to look at it more this episode, but there's been a little bit of discussion and I hope to uh, continue to have that as we all figure out the mechanics. Obviously, a lot of the people commenting, you know, uh, might have watched some other people play. We haven't had a chance to play ourselves. And so it's it's always interesting when you have the um, the comment discussion and the enthusiasm, you know, from folks in pre-release series like this, because um, I'm new to the game. So, yeah, I'm playing it, but I don't necessarily know everything about it. And then you guys are new to it as well. And many of you not playing it, but watching it and watching it on many different sources. So you're learning a lot about it in many ways, more about it in some ways than I am because you have a different perspective. And so it's it's a very, very unique kind of conversation. And we're just going to have to see kind of how it all works out. But I will say that my solution seems to have fixed the homelessness problem the moment that I built the dome and not a moment sooner. That's what I seem to recall happening. So I'm going to stick to my guns uh, for now. And we are also back up to speed three. We're waiting for these rockets to refuel. Or actually, they are refueled, but we're waiting for them to fill up with precious minerals. One of them is almost done. So when it's completely full, we will tell it to take off and then hopefully make a lot of money from that. Uh, we also need to go ahead and summon some more colonists, but uh, I may well wait for this uh, for this one to finish loading up before we do that. But uh, I would like to go ahead and add some stuff to this building, or add some stuff to this dome before long. I would also, I want to spend some time thinking about what needs to be in that particular triangle as well. We've got two living quarters here like we have in the previous domes. Uh, there's an option of researching apartments that allow more living space in a dome to where you don't have to have like two of these set up for uh, one dome, you can have one apartment space and it holds a lot more colonists, uh, which is a nice idea. But uh, for the meantime, what I'm going to do, let's see. No edible food has been harvested, but I think we're okay on food still, right? Right? Yeah, we have 46 food. We're good. And during the day, we still have a power surplus of 25. And it seems like, hang on, let's look. Yeah, it sure seems like our power grid is holding strong during the day, even with the third dome, which is fantastic. Really, really glad to see that. Pipe leak reported. All right, let's take a moment and think about what might need to go in that spot, shall we? We've got some options. Now, I have already done a playground, and there's still another spot there as well, so there, not everything is completely filled in here by any means, but there's been some discussion about, you know, maybe there needs to be one of each type of building in each dome, and I'm not convinced of that. I think that actually the way it works is as long as the colonists can get from dome to dome, you know, with the proper access, like I've been saying since the beginning of this episode and a little bit last episode, um, then they can travel between domes. Um, maybe someone's verified that a little bit more in depth than I have in one of their Let's Plays or something, but um, maybe I'll start doing some research buildings here. I mean, it might not be the worst thing. It would allow for researchers to to do more, but the only thing is that there's not a lot of researchers at the colony yet. I'll, I'll, that's another thing we've been talking about in the comments, and I'll get to that when I summon the next round of colonists. But I guess research maybe perhaps wouldn't be the best thing here. If I go for dome services, I could do another infirmary, or I could do a security station, which could be good. An infirmary does require concrete for maintenance, but I like the idea of having an additional infirmary set up here just for safety's sake alone. And then an art workshop consumes polymers on each visit. That sounds intense. So I don't know that I want to go for those yet until we have a much stronger supply of polymers. But we could also do 
So going back to what I was saying before, do we need maybe food production? Do we need hydroponic farms? Uh, we haven't researched farms or fungal farms yet, but farms will eventually, I presume, uh, fill one entire space on a colony. So maybe we'll end up having farms here. But we could uh, put some hydroponic farms in here to, to allow more food production once more colonists are available. We could do a couple. And that would really ensure that food shortages don't become an issue. Actually, the more I talk about that, and the more I just think about it, the more I like it. So let's go ahead and queue that up. And we'll start a few more hydroponics farms. Now, we might not have the people to work them yet, but as we've seen from the first dome that went up, that's not the worst thing. Now, I, what I do want to see is I'll be curious to, to actually see colonists traveling back and forth between these, these domes to see if it's happening at all. Um, so far, I'm only seeing domes traveling, or drones traveling, excuse me. So that seems to corroborate the theory that the colonists have to stay within one dome. But, I mean, they, they do go outside to work, interestingly enough. So that happens. Why they wouldn't go, you know, to another dome from their current Sector dome scanned. doesn't make sense. So for now, I'm still going to trust that maybe that's what they'll do. All right, so we're, we've got the infirmary resources. Looks like it's... Okay, infirmary is ready to go. Let's take a look at our rockets. 25 of 30 precious metals there, 12 of 30 there, and uh, 7 of 30 there. So again, it looks like we have someone going up, uh, one of our drones going up with one more... All right, so we're at 26 to 30. They're so ready to make some money. I'll be curious to see how much it is. And then as soon as that happens, I'm going to go ahead and summon some more colonists and talk about some other new stuff that I've learned that I haven't even logged into the game yet to check out, as a matter of fact. So I'm excited to see what more gets added. Okay, we're at 12 of 30 here. Yeah, we still haven't gone up to uh, 30. It's just because we've got the three rockets that are being kind of loaded evenly. I wish there was a way, I suppose, if I were to turn off exports on each rocket, it would maybe speed the loading of the of the central one. That one, that might be one way to do it. But at this point, this one's so close, I may as well just leave it. And then the other two will load faster as a result. The only thing is that, of course, bringing down more colonists will bring down another rocket, which will then restart the process. This is really just about figuring out what one full rocket gives us. So we'll be looking at that. What building is not working? That's been showing for a while. Oh, it's this one. Another thing I want to look at really quickly is who is actually working each of these slots. Now, you are a botanist. You're a botanist. And you're a botanist. So, so far, everyone working... Yeah. There's been some concern in the comments over making sure that there is, um, you know, proper allocation of colonists to to jobs. And so far, it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of, yeah, yeah, I, I, they're doing a good enough job for me as far as colonizing, or, or not, <laughs> yeah, they're doing a good job colonizing, but they're doing a good job of working the jobs that they're supposed to be working. So I'm not going to complain too loudly about that situation until there's a huge issue, but, uh, that looks okay to me. Obviously, there's been some areas of concern in the comments, and I've been away for the weekend, and I've been seeing comments pile up, and I'm like, oh my god. I need to make sure my colony's not going to completely fall apart, but it's better than some of you are letting on. <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. This one is at 27, and it looks like another one's going up, so we're going to be at 28. And we are... It looks like we have a bit of an oxygen shortage, but that's mainly due to the pipe leak, which is getting worked on right now. We put up these new oxygen buildings at the end of the previous episode, so we've got good no oxygen and water production. Research. Okay, research good. Complete. Good, so that will help with our recruits, I believe. Live from Mars means more applicants will start to appear on Earth. Now, what can I do to... I think I maybe should go ahead and research the farm. That's not going to take very long. We don't have a lot of money at the moment, but we hope to in just a second. See, we're at 28 of 30, and that might be a precious metal going to that rocket right now, so we just need one more after this one, and we'll be golden. Please let it be a lot of money. <laughs> it better be after all this. It's good to see. Also, notice that what I'm doing right now, yes, I'm commentating a little bit, you know, making some small talk for the first few minutes of this episode, but the colony's running right now. I'm not doing much. 
the the power is staying on the the colonists are staying fed there's a surplus i mean the, the power is the, the, there continues to be a shortage during the night but the storage units are taking care of it you know quite handily you know you can see them you know i'm not sure which one is actually actively dropping right now into the ground it looks like that one might be but they're all quite full so they're doing a really good job of keeping the colony online which i'm thrilled to see still haven't seen any colonists traveling in between the domes yet which is weird but we'll find out more about that before long okay one more precious metal needs to be loaded on phoenix number one we have dragon number one and phoenix number two here Phoenix number one, I'm pretty sure, has already been here. So this, some of these rockets, it's really cool to think about, have already come here and left, and they're back. These re reusable rockets, it's just such an awesome... And that's, of course, very realistic, given the tech that's currently being developed um, by SpaceX and other particular uh, companies. Of course, Space Y is who's running this colony, <laughs> if you've forgotten. But, but in terms of the non-video game life, that is definitely feasible, given how things have been going. Okay go. We are officially sending one rocket away, which should hopefully hopefully mean that the others finish loading a little bit faster, and I'm excited to see how much money we make once that one completes its return journey. Alright, so far we really seem to be good on food. I don't know that there are any botanists. There, uh, there are actually a few people working the new farms, so that's good to see. So we've got food production going in the new dome. Just to make absolutely Sector sure scanned. that people have a place to eat. And actually, for that matter, let me go ahead and add another grocer. This this might be redundant. I'm still learning the mechanics, but I'm going to play it safe. And we're going to add... Where are you? Do, 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 do. There you are. Plop you in right there. And that's going to take what? Concrete? Yeah. Well, thankfully, we have plenty of concrete. Let's see one going in right now. All right, so this rockter, rocket... <laughs> rockter? This rocket is on its way back. 20% of the way, nearly. And then, again, we are scanning these sectors here. Hopefully, we'll find more anomalies soon. We've scanned just about half of the landing zone that we have to colonize. I'll be very excited to bring some colonists down in a few minutes. Because not only is there more to play with that I haven't messed with before that I might have overlooked, that I definitely overlooked for the first um, episodes of gameplay, but... Again, we can have some researchers finally and start changing the landscape of research, which we've seen in the first now eight episodes. It's it's a little bit unusual that we still have as little research as we do, given how long the colony's been around. That's because I've been focused on, you know, getting, you know, basic, you know, systems going. We want polymers. We, we want machine parts. Look how many machine parts we have now, by the way. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, we there have two shifts going. Colonists. Oh, hello. So what does this mean? So he's earth sick. I'm guessing that means his comfort is at zero. So So he has no available service building and no available shopping building. So evidently this guy is just not happy with his situation. Um See see that does seem to imply that he can't go well, I don't know. I guess they're just looking for some kind of shopping to be done. If I could, let's, we'll tell you what. I mean, I do have lots of, um, of polymers. I don't like the idea. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that we have the polymer production to support an art workshop yet. I have this one polymer factory with a good amount of people working at the moment. I could open up this shift and see if maybe more people come to work automatically at the polymer factory. Yeah, there are some people coming to work that. So if that increases polymer production, maybe I can build... Tell you what, let's go Let's go out on a limb here. And let's build that shop. Let's just let's do an art workshop. I'm a little bit concerned about that, but you know, you, you gotta live and learn, right? So let's put this one right here. And I want to see if colonists will come to this in this dome. This would be a good experiment. Because this is theoretically accessible to both domes. So colonists should be like, hey, I can go there and I can and I can shop. We, we should see them traveling to get stuff here. This should answer the question quite handily, I think. 
All right, so the polymers are already there. Construction is happening. And now we'll see what happens when we get that set up. Okay, so the building is not working at the moment. Doesn't appear that anyone is... Yeah, right now it's on this part of the day. It doesn't appear that anyone is coming to work it. But it might be because... Yeah, so some stored polymers are still coming in. Interesting. Funding received. 600 million for those rare metals. Okay, well, that answers that question. Well, um, it does appear that maybe there is something to this whole idea of colonists not being able to exist outside of their, you know, <laughs> their current dome, which is strange to me, and why you wouldn't be able to link them with, like, a tunnel or something is, um, is, is a little bit strange. Uh, let's, let's take a quick look, by the way, because some of you might think, well, there are tunnels. These are outdoor tunnels. These are for drones specifically to reach um, different elevations and, and, and areas. Uh, they're, they're underground tunnels. They're not tunnels between domes. And also, again, in case any of you missed this before, because I had someone still asking me, you know, why aren't you building tunnels? Look at the machine parts cost of building tunnels. Uh, they are, they're pretty intense. So now that I have more machine parts, it's more feasible to build tunnels. But before this point in the series, it really was not an option for me. So that's why I haven't been doing that quite so much. Okay, well, let's pause for a moment. We'll, we might have to reallocate some stuff here. And we may even have to um, consider breaking down some things in in this dome we might yeah this it's just strange like i really thought that colonists would be able to travel between domes and use different dome services but maybe there is something i unlock later on that enables them to do that but we do definitely have one earth sick colonist and it appears to be a result of i mean he visited a grocer so that's helping his comfort but you know we need to take a look at these colonists We need to take a look at these uh, rockets, I mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the colonist list, and I'll show you what I was talking about with the passengers. So we need to go ahead and get some additional colonists here, now that especially we've had more applicants, which is quite nice. Uh, we still want the same age group. We don't want to bring any kids to Mars. Uh, we're okay with kids being born on Mars, but we don't want to bring any kids to Mars uh, outright. Uh, so we're going to bring youth, adult, and middle-aged. Go back, and then specialization-wise, I'm going to go ahead and change this. Um, I want to, I still want to have medic, but we're going to, instead of geologists and instead of um, engineers, we're going to say that we want to focus more purely on scientists. We want to encourage those people to get on the list. And then I'm okay with everything else. I think we've, we've disallowed a few things here. But now if we click the review button, look at this. We can literally say these are the applicants that we approve for the launch so we can literally pick the people that are coming to the colonists which is crazy i didn't i didn't know that that was even a possibility so i'm not sure if there is something yeah we, we want this scientist but I, I don't necessarily know that i want to have complete control over it but it's your way of basically putting your stamp of approval on the people that are coming to the colony so so chloe jenkins is a workaholic i'm okay with that A few more botanists might okay so Gideon Anderson actually sounds pretty cool higher individual base morale low sanity never leads to suicide this might be better for food production is what I was thinking so let's approve a few of these Leroy Dayton is fit but he's a glutton that's that doesn't make any sense oh he's got a chronic condition that's a shame Yeah, let's do that. I like that idea. And then a few additional scientists here. I think I'd selected a scientist up there. I have more scientists on this list. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and do her. Wow. Angel Grant. That's fantastic. Okay, let's do Caroline. I want to bring some botanists in, but mostly scientists. 
And then a few no specialization folks would be good. Any other scientists that I missed? <laughs> I got a gamer. Recover sanity when gaming. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I don't see any more scientists on the list, so we can do... I mean, I think I can just leave it as we're seeing, and it will approve the rest. Oh, okay. Crap. I see. So if you want to individually select the people that are coming, I just lost all the selections. Well, I'm not going to worry about it then. It's good to know that I can do that, and I might do it next time, but given that that just completely erased everything I did, I'm just going to launch the rocket. I've, I've set my preferences for specialization. We want scientists, we want botanists, and we want uh, maybe some more medics just to make sure that people are well taken care of. Um, security might be a good idea soon-ish, but we don't have any security folks at the moment. So let's go ahead and just launch... And we've got some new colonists on the way. And we need to make sure we have some residences ready for them. So let's now jump to that. We haven't researched apartments yet, but living quarters, definitely a good idea. And this is going to provide how many? Yeah, so that's going to provide more than enough for a new group of colonists. Let's go ahead and plug in some research labs, shall we? Shall we, rather? Okay, and there's that. Now we could do a nursery, which would be good for kids born here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, I'm, I'm going to build this dome more around the idea that they need all of the essentials in one dome. So uh, I'm going to focus a little bit differently this time. Now we could do a school here so that kids can be raised properly. And then an infirmary would need to go here. Let's actually have an infirmary right across from the living space. And then a grocer, which will bring food in from the exterior. So food can be transported in between the domes. I don't necessarily need food production in this dome. And we might have a farm in this dome um, given the opportunity. So I might wait to do anything more here, but um, a diner may be good to have as well, as far as sanity is concerned. Let's set a diner up there for, uh, behind the infirmary, and then the drones will hopefully go to work getting all that built while the colonists are on their way. Now, of course, adding all that means that by the time these buildings are up and running, we might have a very different power situation. We'll have to keep an eye on that quite closely. Meanwhile, our next round of uh, heavy metals are being loaded, and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that a lot of it gets taken care of while these rockets are being refueled. That would, that would be helpful to me. Just saying, it would, it would be, it would be uh, convenient if the rockets could do that. One of them is just over halfway, but let's see how we're doing production-wise on the metals here. Just 2.1 a day. We don't have a ton of geologists, so what I'm hoping is that the, the colonists that are on the way... Is there is there a way of seeing who's on each rocket? That would be nice. I don't think there is, though. Yeah, so this is a problematic colonist. This is our Earthsick colonist. Um, so he's looking for exercise, essentially. This guy is... I'm, I'm guessing he is... All right, so since he needs exercise, maybe one of the best things to do... This, pr this provides drinking, relaxation, and social activity. Could we maybe... I don't, I don't want to break down the school. That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, wow. You Can you pick the traits that you cultivate? That's interesting. I like that a lot. 
Okay, yeah, I mean, I could break down the, the space bar, I suppose, and replace it with an, an exercise place instead. So that question does seem, I mean, the, the question from the beginning of the episode does seem to have been answered with a little bit of experimentation. I mean, he shouldn't be earth sick. Like, if he's looking for exercise, he's got it right there. So the fact that he's not finding it, that does seem to imply that this is not available to him. Even though it's within range. We still need to build the third dome, so it's okay. But I don't know how to deal with his earth sickness given that he's in this dome. We need to leave the grocer, we need to leave the playground. I mean, the playground, I suppose, we could do without. I don't like the idea, but that's the one that could maybe... that could most stand to be removed. And I would get some polymers back from that. But then I would need to build something exercise-related. It's, it's exercise that our, our man's looking for here. And yeah, the open air gym is the only thing I know of that provides it. Interesting. I mean, I suppose one possibility is I could, since we're doing so well on food, maybe I could go ahead, and food can be transported between domes, maybe I can get rid of the playground, put the infirmary over there, and put in an exercise building. That would fix the issue. I don't like the idea of doing this, but I think, you know what, let's try it. Let's go ahead and salvage this, both of them. Now the only thing is, am I going to be able to completely... Exterior Mars buildings need... See, that's what I was afraid of. We don't have the decommission protocol researched yet, so we can't actually do anything about these broken down buildings Sector yet. Scanned. So, screw it, I'm just going to rebuild them until such time as we can decommission them. But what we'll do is we'll decommission those two, decommission the playground, put the infirmary over there, and then we'll put an exercise building in there. Meanwhile, sector has been scanned, we found a lot of concrete, a lot of metal, and it does appear that a passenger rocket has arrived in orbit and is ready to land. Let's bring them down. These are our new researchers. Now, their buildings are not all ready yet, but I'm going to go ahead and land them right... Well, no, let's... No, let's, let's put them by the dome just to avoid any mishaps. Come on down, guys. Also, we are 28 minutes in. Time flies when you're having fun. Even though some things are confusing. <laughs> and lists disappear after you've worked on them. That's okay. New colonists have arrived. Colonists are departing. Departing colonists. Oh, interesting. Is our Earth sick colonist leaving? Interesting. I didn't know that was possible. So I guess he's going to get on the rocket. All right, well, that solves the problem. That does, however, cost us a medic. I did not know they could do that. So he just straight up left, and now he is... It doesn't say anything about him being on the colony, but I'm guessing it just kind of counts him as, as gone now. Or being on the rocket. But it seems like it's just kind of counting him as gone. Okay, well, it is what it is. Now, see, the thing is, we're going to need exercise eventually here, too, aren't we? So, this is maddening. Like, there's not enough room to ensure that that doesn't happen again. So, this is just going to be a thing until we have larger domes that can have more facilities in each dome. That's going to be how we solve this, this problem. And also, I am going to go ahead and start experimenting with this button here. Cable fault reported. I'm going to tell these guys to load one rocket at a time. I think that's how we solve this problem. Because what's happening at the moment is that... Yeah, see, I think this one... I think these guys are going to get unloaded now. They might even... Do I see, do I see it defueling? It shouldn't be defueling.
All right, so it seems like what they might be doing is now getting the resources off and putting it all on one rocket, which is what I should have been doing from the beginning. That makes a lot more sense. So you have to micro it a little bit. That's fine. Makes sense now. The infirmary is going up. The research labs are still not up, and it's probably because we are out of... We're not out of electronics, though, but we're probably getting low on them. Yeah, we are quite low on electronics. So before I end this episode, let's go ahead and go back to cargo. And we need to special order some electronics from Earth. I think 10 should do it. If I do 15, that would be more than enough. Let's go ahead and launch because we're going to have more. We're going to send more metals soon. Now, what else might need to go on this rocket? Just for the sake, just for the sake of not wasting a launch. We could do some orbital probes. But that would be the rest of our funding. Polymers, maybe? Let's do that. We're making these on the colony, but since we just built that new art factory, we'll launch that rocket as well. So four of our rockets are going to be on the ground. And this guy is now the only one loading up resources. Hello. Yeah, that's going to be more and more of a threat right there. The longer things go. Alright, so that rocket's on its way. Any more that my uh, drones can do? We haven't found any more anomalies. Still scanning. Hope to find a few more. It's a shame that we couldn't get research going this episode. I was hoping to, but I totally get it. These research labs require a lot of electronics. But I'm hoping that when these get going, there's a sea change in how much we can research. And it seems like food is still okay. Yeah, food's still fine. Still got lots of rare metals. These guys are almost ready to take off, and we're 32 minutes in, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this episode here. But in the next one, we're going to launch this rocket, get some more money. Resources yeah, it's at 28 now. Yeah, we're low on electronics. Of course we are. That's why I have another rocket coming, and it's full of them. But uh, then we, I guess what we'll need to do is get an electronics factory up, which I have one, I think, in my prefabs that I ordered several rockets ago. We just haven't built it yet because um, we've been waiting for colonists. So interesting decisions coming up. We, sh we seem to be okay on power for the time being. Um, there is this building in need of, what's your, what's your deal here? Oh, you're waiting for fuel. Interesting. There's a lot of fuel here. Hold that thought. Yeah, we seem to have a bit of a fuel surplus, and I think it's because we're only fueling one rocket. Well, actually, no. It's just we have a ton of fuel. Well, it's good to see. So I guess what I'm going to do really quickly before I end the episode, since I'm looking right at it and it's a quick fix, is I will build a few more fuel depots to store this excess fuel. We'll put one there, and we'll put one here. So that rockets have a, or so that drones have a place to put this excess fuel. They're going to go to town as soon as I unpause it. But I'll stop this one here. And like I said, in the next one, we are going to land that rocket with supplies. We're going to send this rocket up and get some more money, as well as these two, one at a time. Now that I've figured out how to micro that. And then uh, next time we order some colonists, I might actually special order them a little bit. But I don't mind the system so far of letting them kind of randomly pick as well. I do like that you can individually select. And I appreciate you guys for pointing that out to me, because I had no idea about that review button. So the more you know. And... As far as what I was saying earlier in the episode about the game not being playable for everyone yet, that's not going to be true for much longer, is it? That's, uh, we're looking at, what, two days for you guys now? This is uh, going up on Tuesday morning. Game's coming out Thursday, so I'm sure you're excited. I am excited for you, and I look forward to talking about the game with you guys once you're actually playing it. We can talk about it from that context as well, because I'll be curious to see, like, how the experience might be different or, like, what, um, what, you know, just, just how your impression might be different as a as an actual player versus viewer. So really, really looking forward to uh, those comments as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.